back swings can be so confusing. I'm gonna give you some insights from your wedge all the way up to your driver on how you might improve your backswing for better contact and straighter shots. Welcome back to the channel, guys. Today, I'm talking about backswing. I'm gonna give you some insights into how you can appreciate that the backswing may start to feel different as you move up and through the bag. When we set up to the golf ball, and I bought three clubs out here, the golf bag, I've got my driver, I've got my seven iron, I've got my pitching wedge. I'm gonna set myself up to the ball with the driver, and then I'm gonna make the butt of the golf club. Of all of the three different golf clubs here, sit in the same spot relative to my, my body, and of course the ball will move further forwards and further back. There's the driver with that style of shaft lean, i.e. positive style of shaft lean, and then as the ball goes further back, we start to see more of a negative shaft lean, but the handle in itself is staying very much in the same spot. But what you can see on these three different shaft angles here, that the pitch of the golf swing will be different for them all. When we swing the golf club back with a, with a pitching wedge, when we swing the golf club back with a seven iron, and then if I've got enough fingers and forearms, <laughs> I can hold my driver up there, you can then see how that relates to a backswing. So therefore, when the lever gets longer, there'll be more rotation in the forearm. When the lever is shorter, i.e. your pitching wedge, the shaft will be more upright, and so the forearm will start to feel a little different. When the shaft is pitched up like this, and because of the loft that we've got on the golf club, we see far left cu less curvature in the sky. And what you tend to see is when you're swinging the golf club with a pitching wedge, you're able to get away with a path line, as I say, that's a little across it and a face that's a little open. The ball tends to have more influence in where the path is pointing with more of a lofty golf club than where the face is pointing. So when I start to swing across the back of the golf ball and I've got myself still an open face as I swing across the golf ball, you can see that the face to path value on the right hand side there is open. My path was eight degrees to the left. You can see my golf ball has started and ended left. If I'd have done the same thing with the seven iron and the driver, we would have seen way more dispersion to the right. So golfers historically will get away with a more vertical, more across the golf ball swing with the, less loft, uh, with the more lofted golf clubs. As I say, as you get to re reduction in loft, the more you tend to see curvature in the sky. Therefore, golfers will tend to feel like they can compress and, and strike the irons better with more loft. What I want to give you a sense of today is, is how you might want to think about the top of the backswing and how you get there and how you move this golf club. We tend to see so many people talk about the takeaway and when they see the club move itself inside, they're, they're always very quick to fix the inside. When the golf club then starts to get pushed away, we start to see this shaft very much shallow or laid down early on. Then the pattern of movement tends to come a bit cross-lined, then it comes steeper. Now the golfer immediately draws his attention to the steeper downswing. The shaft is steepening the over-the-top look. And then the golfer, let me just grab something in between the driver and the wedge there, then the golfer starts to work on, because they're seeing the shaft steepen up like this, they're starting to work the arm down inside in an effort to make the, the path swing more from the inside. Understand that when we're moving this handle around, the more we work the handle down in an effort to make the path more inside, actually what you're trying to, or what you're actually doing, is you're causing that shaft to steepen on the way down. If you wanted the shaft to shallow, you would actually need the handle to move more forwards. And so therefore, when we start to move the golf club in the backswing, 
we really need to see how this shaft is going to work steep to shallow. And so I want to just give you a sensation that how your arms work in a backswing to make you feel how we might start to understand the transition phase, the backswing phase, and how this weight is going to move. So lifting the club up in front of us and making the club shaft lay down as I lift it up is very much how I'm trying to feel the golf club work in a backswing. So when I lift the golf club up in front of me, I'm pushing down with the butt of the golf club to elevate the golf club head up. If the club head weighed 100 kilos, I certainly wouldn't want to lift the handle up. When I lift the handle up and I move the golf club away, look how the head swings down, the handle's moving up, the shaft then becomes very shallow. Well, of course, if you actually brought the golf club very shallow into the golf ball like so, you'd just keep on running into the ground. So as soon as a golfer starts to get the club too shallow on the way back, with the shaft pitch, his arms are steep, shaft pitch, then all of a sudden you're trying to drive the club down onto the golf ball to make contact. And that's where you then see this over the top motion coming into the golf ball to try to make contact. So the over the top is very much a reaction to how you take the golf club away. But if you start to just talk about a takeaway, you're changing the balance of how this club works in space. So you can't talk about the change of direction without talking about the change of backswing as well and, and how you're starting to appreciate how this club moves in a, in a swing. So this is a great drill for you that, that you want to, you know, and, and you can even go, look, I'm gonna take my whole set here So I've got my full set of irons. <laughs> and then I'm gonna try and lift them up. So that's, that's as high as I can lift them from the handle end. Now watch how much easier it is to me lift them up that way. I pushed. I pushed the handle down to get the head weight up so I could get the handle underneath it. But I couldn't, when I started lifting the handle up, I couldn't <laughs> physically lift them. And so when we have a light golf club, effectively, this is, this is how golfers are swinging the club. Lifting the handle up and then you're trying to hoist the head up. Why would you lift the head up, uh, the handle up first when you should be lifting the head up first? So this drill where we're lifting the head up really creates the force down in the butt. Then as we lift the club head up, the heavy end must swing to the right of the handle. So if I just lifted the handle up and then rotated, can you see how much more vertical that club shaft is, but the handle has worked inside? Now I'm gonna lift the club head up and lay the shaft to the right. Lift the club head up, lay the shaft to the right. Then I make a back swing. Now you can see I've got a much better orientated shaft. How we use the heavy end and how we appreciate the differential between pitching wedge seven iron to driver with the, the shaft angles is an important part of when you're changing your golf swing and you're working on your game, at the top of your backswing, the feels that you have in your hands and the rotational force, if you like, in your forearms cannot be the same. I wanted to give you that bit of insight, something a little bit different, not so much ball hitting, but more discussion. Hopefully that gives you some insight into where you might want to go with your backswing, depending on if you're someone that swings the club in, if you're someone that's moved the club head out. But try that little drill, lifting the club up in front of you, laying the shaft down and, and completing the backswing. And I think you'll find that that'll really help you feel some different sensations at the top of your backswing. Hopefully you appreciate that's good coaching. 
If you've liked this, hit the like, share and subscribe, and I'll see you on the next one.